Imagine every atom in the universe magically turns into ants. But these aren't normal ants, they're the size of atoms. Tiny, microscopic little beings. Each ant is assigned one chess game, and they all start playing one game per second, every second on a chessboard, scaled to their atomic size. If they had started at the beginning of the universe at roughly 13.8 billion years ago, the progress they would have made of solving chess would be a number so close to zero that it's basically nothing. But what does that even mean? A game is solved when you know the perfect move from every possible position, like a GPS that never makes a wrong turn. Humans have already solved many games before. For example, tic-tac-toe, we know every possible position. And with perfect play, it always ends in a draw. The same goes in different ways for games like blackjack and checkers. Each one has a mathematically proven way to play that guarantees the best possible result. In blackjack, it's called basic strategy and it guarantees you not a win, but the highest mathematically possible expectation. Checkers goes even further. That game has been fully solved. If both players follow perfect play, the result is always a draw. The mystery is gone. But with chess, it is different. The number of possible games is known as the Shannon number, named after Claude Shannon, the father of information theory. He calculated that there are roughly 10 to the power of 120 legal games from start to finish. When we speak of numbers of such unbelievable magnitude, the human mind isn't capable of truly grasping their enormity. If we return to our ant analogy, by the time our sun exhausts its fuel in about 5 billion years, ants would have go up to 6 times 10 to the minus 23rd percent. Fast forward another 5 billion years. When the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies collide, they would have advanced only slightly further. And a trillion years later, in a universe so old that it will no longer have stars and it will be only the place of cold darkness. Ants wouldn't have far reached about 1% of 1% of 1% nine times over of the total task. And keep in mind, these aren't lazy ants. These are hyper-productive, never sleeping, universe-powered ants playing non-stop for trillions upon trillions of years. And still, they barely scratch the paint. Chess is simply too vast for brute force. The universe is too small for it. So could we ever solve chess? In 1997, the historic Garry Kasparov, 15-year ruler of the World Championship throne, lost to Deep Blue, an engine developed by IBM. This was the first time a computer defeated a reigning world champion in a match under standard conditions. And that match didn't just rewrite the scoreboard, it ignited a storm. Kasparov himself accused IBM of cheating and said that some moves had been made by humans, probably a team of grandmasters. But controversy or not, the outcome stood and its meaning was impossible to ignore. That was the day the world realized machines were no longer just fast calculators. They could outthink us in pure strategic combat. Deep Blue's win marked the beginning of a new hierarchy in chess. From then on, engines were not training tools. They were the absolute standard of perfection. Whether achieved cleanly or cloaked in suspicion, that match became the first undeniable signal. The age of human dominance in chess was ending and the reign of machines had begun. Deep Blue was capable of evaluating 200 million positions per second. Yet even this seems almost laughable when compared to the challenge of solving chess. The sheer number of possible positions is so vast that brute force calculation is impossible. Regular computers, no matter how fast, can never check them all. We have to look for smarter approaches. In 2017, after just four hours of self-play, AlphaZero became stronger than Stockfish, the world's top traditional chess engine at the time. In a subsequent 100 game match, AlphaZero won 28 games, drew 72 and lost none. But we have to understand what is the difference between them. Stockfish is like a tireless animal, calculating like deep blue thousands of thousands of possible moves and choosing the best ones. But AI doesn't spend time in useless calculating. It considers only moves that make sense and it learns and uses information that it has accumulated while playing. And now you might be thinking, what do any of these stories have to do with our question? 
we're looking for the perfect tool to accomplish this incredible task. And with the whole AI revolution, we finally have a real chance to get closer than ever. But before anything else, there's something I want to clear up. We need a precise definition of what solving chess actually means. We have three possibilities. And in order to solve chess, we will have to know which will always happen in a perfect game before the first move is even played. White will always win, and the advantage of playing first is what breaks the draw. White and black draw. The advantage of playing first is not enough to break the draw. Black wins, and playing first is not an advantage. And whichever of these three truths it is, it's already encoded in the game, we just don't know which one. Our challenge isn't rewriting reality, it's uncovering it. Mathematically, it is not possible to assure 100% any of these answers, but some of them are highly more possible than others. So using AI, we could increase the possibilities to a degree so close to 100 that we could consider chess solved. How is this possible? Imagine a billionaire offers you this deal. You must flip a fair coin 100 times. And if it lands on the same side every single time, you die. But if it fails to do that even once, you win $10 million. Technically, you can't say that your life is 100% safe, but the chance of the coin landing all heads or all tails is so astronomically tiny that it's essentially zero. You'd almost certainly walk away alive and extremely rich. And that's where we stand. Not with absolute certainty, but with a mountain of evidence pointing stubbornly in the same direction. Every strong engine, every database of perfect table bases, they all whisper the same thing. The deeper we dig, the more the universe seems to shrug and say, Yeah, dude, it's probably a draw. So the final answer, the one you have been waiting to know the entire video, is chess solvable? Yes or no? Yes! I believe that a perfect game of chess always ends in a draw. Some might consider this answer wrong, because it isn't an absolute certainty. But that's the point. In problems of this scale, absolute certainty is impossible. And in a way, that answer is strangely beautiful. If chess is a draw by force, it means chess isn't a game about crushing your opponent, but about two minds navigating a perfectly balanced universe, each trying to disturb the symmetry for just a moment. When both play perfectly, the universe refuses to tilt. The board becomes a tiny cosmos in equilibrium. If you have a different opinion, I would love to hear it in the comments. This video is different from the ones I usually post, which some of you might have noticed. If you like this style, and I see that you smash the like button, I will post more of this content. I hope that you've enjoyed it, and remember, this is Chimporn Chess.